In today's video, I am going to be traveling back in time to talk about a TV variety show from 1980 called Pink Lady and Jeff. If you don't remember it, don't beat yourself up. This one wasn't on TV for long. And while there are many good reasons for this variety show's all too brief run on NBC, it is still beloved by many TV fans such as myself for, ironically, the same exact reasons that led to the show's cancellation. I know, I know, it's kind of weird, but give me a couple of minutes and I think things will clear up a bit. And this video, I promise, will spill the beans about what they did after their variety show ended. But first, just a little bit of context to get us started. Pink Lady is a Japanese singing duo consisting of Mitsuyo Nemoto, Mie, and Kieko Masuda, Kei. In the late 1970s, this energetic duo gained international recognition. They even had a modest hit here in the U.S. titled Kiss in the Dark. And somewhere along the way, they caught the eye of the head of NBC, Mr. Frederick J. Silverman. Truthfully, folks, I don't know if Fred's middle initial is J, but it sounds good. Just like Homer J. Simpson, it just kind of rolls off the tongue. So anyway, with Mr. Silverman's blessing, Pink Lady and Jeff premiered in 1980 and introduced Mia and Kay to American audiences. The show featured skits, musical performances, and guest appearances by many of my favorite celebrities. More on that in just a moment. Oh, and of course there was Jeff, comedian Jeff Altman. They're hotter than the odd couple, sunnier than Sonny and Cher. It's me and Key. It's Kay. And Jeff. They're Japan's hottest superstars, Pink Lady, in their American TV debut. He's hit comic Jeff Altman. Pink Lady, a new series coming soon on NBC. You bet. Looking back now with so much time since it originally aired on NBC, it's easy to see that this show was destined to fail. Why? Well, probably the biggest and most noticeable thing for everyone was that neither of these young ladies could speak English. And they couldn't just not speak it. They didn't understand it. Imagine how frustrating that would be to be headlining a TV show and really not understand its primary language. And that's the reason we had comedian Jeff Altman on board. Someone had to do the talking. I would also argue that Pink Lady's music at least for me, wasn't all that appealing. I remember them performing one of their biggest hits, UFO, on the show and thinking that it wasn't all that great. What was great, however, were the cheesy green screen effects that were going on in the background of that song. Yep, that's the kind of stuff that would keep me glued to the screen back in those days. And there were other reasons that I tried to catch the show. They had some great guest stars. In particular, I remember a performance of Clones by Alice Cooper. It was the first time that I'd heard this song, and I instantly fell in love with his new sound. Getting back to the guest stars, Florence Henderson, Lauren Green, Sherman Hemsley, Larry Hagman, Donny Osmond, Greg Evigan, Hugh Hefner. The list goes on and on. If you were a fan of pop culture, how could you not love the guest stars that showed up to help Pink Lady with their English skills? Ultimately, however, despite this program being his brainchild, Silverman gave up on the show and Pink Lady and Jeff was cancelled after only six episodes. The series abrupt end marked a significant turning point in Pink Lady's career and when the duo returned to Japan to presumably continue their success, well, things weren't quite as rosy as before. It could be argued that their attempt to achieve fame in the US dampened their flame of celebrity just a bit in Japan. And beyond that, Kay had fallen in love with another Japanese singer, and for some crazy reason, this was causing issues with the record company. I haven't really looked into this part of their story, so I won't even pretend to understand what was going on, but I do know that she was being asked to choose between that relationship and her career. And wouldn't you know it, she followed her heart. So there was time spent away. Following their separation, both artists continued to contribute to the entertainment world, albeit independently. But you know what? These two, well, you can't keep good friends apart. And over the decades, they have found ways to reunite and record albums together. It's a shame, however, that these two decided to never take another shot at the American market again. Part of me feels like they were just a couple of decades too early. In 2010, they announced that there would be no more reunions because they were never going to break up again. They would be Pink Lady forever. And I gotta say, I just love that. 
The big news was that there would be no more big news ever again. There are some really great videos of recent concert performances right here on YouTube. They're lots of fun to watch. And the ladies look great. Here's a picture of Pink Lady from just a few years back. 2020, I believe. These beautiful ladies are now in their 60s and they are still finding time to record and perform. Their most recent single was released in 2019 titled Meteor. It was part of a soundtrack for an anime movie. You can hear that song right here on YouTube. Just search using the term Pink Lady and Meteor and you'll find it. Resilience is the term that comes to mind when I think about Pink Lady. To answer the question, whatever happened to them? Well, the simple response is nothing. Everything went as planned. But the reality is that it didn't. After whirlwind success in their native country of Japan, things went awry and these two ladies demonstrated an incredible amount of fortitude and determination over the next four decades to ensure that their musical friendship would stay intact. It's a lesson for the ages, folks. At one point, at least here in the U.S., these two were the punchline of many comedians' jokes. And while they may have given up on the U.S. market, they never gave up on each other and success, albeit intermittent, continued to come their way to this very day. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. But most importantly, thank you to these community members who've clicked on that little join button and become channel members. Their special level of support is truly appreciated. It keeps me going. My channel members have had access to a preview version of this video, and here are a few of the comments that they've left. Dominic D said, along with My Mother the Car, Super Train, and every short-lived McLean Stevenson series, this show goes down as one of the biggest turkeys in television history. It did, however, have a strange charm to it. The girls were very cute, and Jeff Altman was definitely talented. It's baffling, though, how this show ever got on the air in the first place. John Collins said, Interesting, lovely ladies. The best aspect which lasted from this is their friendship. And Super Sith Lord, a.k.a. Mike D., says, I think after the phenomenal success of Donnie and Marie, that led producers to try something similar, but it always led to ideas that were a bit quirkier and less mainstream as a result. Nonetheless, I love those lesser known shows anyway. I actually really enjoyed the short-lived Pink Lady. It was ironically Jeff Altman that I didn't care for. I didn't think he was very funny, and he had kind of an off-putting Hugh Hefner vibe. Another equally short-lived show from that era that I loved was the Hanna-Barbera Happy Hour, whose niche was that the hosts were life-size marionettes. It's worth looking up here on YouTube just for giggles. Thrash Pondo Pond said, Sadly, this show not only failed, it killed musical variety shows in the U.S. And lastly, Braidwood Inn, a.k.a. Justin Eilert, in reference to Jeff Altman, asks, is he related to Bruce Altman and Robert Altman? To answer that question, Justin, I don't believe that he is. Hey, thanks again, folks. Have a great day.